felt that the, the Didis when they would correct you or they would say something it wasn't about them or about their ego or their needs it was about what you need to do to improve and benefit yourself and they are like a signpost if you forget Maharaji they'll quickly remind you here go there go there it is so often that the institutes have a different way of growing or not growing after the after the master is no longer in the physical form but you could see how the things are going on the thing the way the things are going on it's exactly like how maharaji was doing it would have done that and they're doing a commendable job it's such a huge it's such a huge endeavor both spiritually physically even medically because i'm a doctor i will think about medically um, I think uh, it's it's divine. Oh, I mean, you could just just take a look at what they, you know their daily schedule, the da daily routine. They're they're up since like two in the morning. They're just nonstop, just you know, propagating Raji's mission, his philosophy, and they're doing this with a smile on their face, always and every time. They don't even need to say anything to you, just they look at you with such endearment and you just feel like every hole in your heart is automatically filled. And there's nothing in this world that could ever top that feeling. You know, there's there's no hug from your mom on a bad day that could top that feeling. There's nothing in this world that makes you feel more loved and more cared for than just the simple look they give you. You know, they're leaders of such a massive trust. I mean, you know, I have a small company with five employees and it is such a challenge dealing with just five people. <laughs> and they're dealing probably with over 5,000. And the way they deal with it is just amazing. Something that Bhardi Didi really reiterates over and over again is the importance of uh, Guru Seva and specifically Nishkam Seva. Um, there was, there's been multiple times where Didi has reminded me that one, it's really critical that I continue to do 24 hour constant remembrance of Hari Guru. And secondly, is in everything that I do in that Chintan, it should all be dedicated towards Hari Guru. Um, and that always sticks with me because one, the power of that statement is so deep. And second, coming from Bari Didi, who is the most loving person in this world, um, it just touches my heart every time. Swami Govindananda. Well, I came into this pathway in 1975. I came to India in 1982 and met Sri Maharaji for his 60th birthday. I came back in 1985 and it was about May in that year and Sri Maharaji surprised me and I think everybody else by saying, just out of the, out of the blocks, I'm going to make you a pracharik. And I have been doing prachar, that is teaching, uh, primarily in the Western world. And my seva was to spread the name of Radha to the four corners. 
Well, it was 1982, Sri Maharaj's 60th birthday. And at that time, when I came, it was my first visit to India. The ashram, Mangar, was, was quite small, in fact. Uh, it, it was so small that there was only a few buildings. And through the main street, you know, the local farmers would bring their goats and their cows and, and the buffalo would walk through and it was a shingle road. And it, it was really charming. So in that context, I met the Didis for the first time. Uh, my focus was on Sri Maharaji, as you can imagine. But I became quickly aware of the three daughters of Sri Maharaji um, moving around in the background, and they were so full of life. People had a natural respect for the deities. You can't not. Um, they, it's just like this golden light shining. And when you're in the presence of such people, particularly those three daughters, you want to pay homage. But they didn't ask that of you. In fact, all their attention was to Maharaji. And if you tried that sort of carry on, they wouldn't wear it. Uh, you know, don't do that. My name is Udgum Goyal. Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I'm a product lead. I grew up in this path. Um, my parents always involved me in the philosophy and kind of guided me towards Maharaji's teachings, but growing up, this was always something that I followed simply due to duty rather than something that I appreciated. Um, eventually, I think the reason that the turning point for me was the perspective that it provided me into the purpose of my life. Um, specifically, I think Maharaji's, the, the core part of Maharaji's philosophy is where is true happiness? Um, I, once I understood Maharaji's philosophy in that, hey, you know, we are the soul, we want eternal happiness, and there is no eternal happiness in this world, um, that perspective, I think, fundamentally changed how I viewed and lived my life. Maybe a long-winded way of saying that Maharaji has kind of given me a deep understanding of what I want and how I can achieve it. And now that I have that understanding, it's hard for me to go back and, um, you know, experience the world in the way that the world expects us to, which is, hey, you know, make a lot of money, get married, have kids, you know, do really well in your job, go see the entire world, right? Um, for me now, it's become, you know, this is great. This is all very temporary. Um, the eternal goal is to get um, complete happiness, and the way to do that is to fully surrender to Hari Guru. Um, no doubt there is a difference without Maharaji here. We still definitely experience him in every single thing that we do, but there is still a tangible difference without him, him being here physically. Um, but the way that we are able to kind of come to terms with that, at least as of right now, is thanks to Divi's. The reason why that's been so palatable for me personally is just seeing how selfless DDs are with every single action they do. From Zooming with us at 2.30 in the morning while they're eating breakfast, chatting with 200 people across the world to sitting in satsang with us and in picnics, um, spending their entire lives 24-7 really just focusing um, us on towards the path of Maharaji. I think that selflessness has been so inspiring to me. I mean, I think it, there's so many ways that this manifests, right? Um, one small little example is doing jaykar. We're never allowed to do jaykar of DDs. Something super simple. Secondly, um, if we ever, if anything ever good happens to us, right? And we say, oh, thank you, DDs, for your grace, or thank you, DDs. It's never about them. It's always about Maharaji. I think that goes back to my earlier point about their selflessness. Um, if you think about anybody in this world, regardless of how like quote unquote selfless they are, at some point that ego has to get to them, right? At some point it would be okay, like it's okay, you can like, you can, you can give me praise. But with Didi's it's never ever about them, not even one hint. It's always about Maharaji and that kind of selflessness is so divine and so pure to Maharaji's philosophy that it's the biggest inspiration possible and it's one of the many reasons why um, I try to keep as close association to these as possible. 
Something that Bharti Didi really reiterates over and over again is the importance of uh, Guru Seva and specifically Nishkam Seva. There's been multiple times where Didi has reminded me that one, it's really critical that I continue to do 24 hour constant remembrance of Hari Guru. And secondly, is in everything that I do in that Chintan, it should all be dedicated towards Hari Guru. Um, and that always sticks with me because one, the power of that statement is so deep. And second, coming from Bari Didi, who is the most loving person in this world, um, it just touches my heart every time. There was one time when I was sitting in satsang uh, in front of Didi's in Vrindavan actually last year, and it kind of struck me like, wow, when I do love Radha Krishna, I have to be selfless, that love. And it was as that moment struck in me um, mentally, where Buddy Didi looked at me and she like nodded almost approvingly, like, yes, that's exactly what you need to be doing. Um, again, nothing said at all, but it's, it's as if she was basically just reiterating that fact. So um, I would say that's, that's probably the biggest one, though it is quite simple and obviously the core tenant of Maharaji's philosophy, but it always sticks with me. So the Didis made an immense impression on me. They were carefree in that sense that they were a lot younger, of course, 1982. The responsibilities that they had, they had some, but nothing like they've had to grow into by necessity of today. I had occasion where Sri Maharaji gave me the seva of sitting with each individual daughter, the three of them, for an hour each day with the point of view of having English conversation to theoretically help their English. What I discovered was their English was always, was actually at that time pretty good. So the conversation was more about confidence and just hearing the different language. Um, and so when I would sit with them, um, they would invariably talk about Sri Maharaji and their life. Bari Jiji uh, particularly did talk about um, how Sri Maharaji um, wanted them to go and live not with wealthy people, but to go and actually have life experiences. And so they went into different places for education, uh, living with satsangis, um, being part of that environment as opposed to coming like a guest and being served and treated like royalty. So Barajiji, uh, she did say that um, Maharaji wanted them to be grounded, wanted them to understand what uh, normal people, their life, what they were going through, what they had to face, what they experienced, and to put their hands to work as well. So that they would do things like, you know, cleaning and dishes and bed making and contributing to the environment. The thing about the Didis, uh, they never would say, look at me, look at me. They would never say, I'm special, I'm special. What they would do is if when they related with you, it was apparent to me that it was always for your benefit. And so um, in that environment, I can imagine that the households who had the great privilege and blessing to have them live with them, they would have learned an immense amount about Sri Maharaji, about the pathway of Bhakti Yoga, um, they would have learned so much just by the deities being who they are. So Gigi said it was a, an extraordinary time and I think today they still draw from that. They have an immense understanding of human nature and of the trials and tribulations that we as individuals 
have to go through in order to progress uh, in this pathway. So I think those early day experiences that the Gigi's had enabled them uh, to just quietly assimilate and absorb the trials and tribulations and also learn that this is a pathway. But they, know, they knew it anyway. But the pathway of Bhakti Bhaj is to serve, to give of yourself to the one you love. And the, there's no service too menial and no service too great. It's all about your attitude. Why are you doing the seva? If you get that correct, then any work can be done as a devotion, as an offering to Bhagawan, God, Sri Radha Krishna. My name is Kripa and I'm from Brazil. I was raised in a house where my family is very accepting and tolerant of all religions. When I first started on the spiritual journey, I'd finished reading the Bhagavad Gita and there they said that you need to find a guru. And I'd been looking online. I didn't even know the process of finding a guru. I didn't know what was right from wrong. And then one day I saw one of Maharaji's bhajans on, on YouTube actually, and something just sparked. And from then on, I started watching Maharaji's lectures and it, it's been history since then. And I just found out about Didi's through, because you, you know, you join the online shivers and everything. So I used to see Didi's um, and everybody like doing the sadhana shivers. And I was like, oh, I really, I would love to meet them. I'd love to meet them. And then one day I decided to, to come to, to India for Holi. And that was when, that was when we first met, like family which is the same feeling you get when you see Maharaji. I mean, like family. Before I physically met Didi's, I used to um, join in on the Zoom calls. Um, they invited me to join when I was at Radha Madhav Dam in Austin. So I remember sitting there with everyone just waiting. And as soon as Didi's came on, from the very beginning of the phone call, it, it felt like, like I was talking to family, beyond admirable. I mean, from the moment we wake up until the moment we sleep, deities are continuously just working. And the way people feel when they're around deities is just beyond words. Like you have to be there in person to actually experience it. I absolutely love deities. They, they make you feel, I've never physically met Maharaji, but I imagine that they, the way they make you feel is the exact same way I feel Maharaji would make you feel. And when you hear other devotees that actually met Maharaji, the description sounds the same, like you feel like a little kid. Like you just want to be around them. Maharaji's teaching is the easiest and the most effective. The way that Didi's and Maharaji teach you, like Guru Dhyan is the most essential thing. And Maharaji and Didi's always encourage shedding tears, crying out for God's love, and, and keeping the mind constantly engaged in God. And they, they work in concert with each other and they complement each other amazingly so. Uh, Buddy Gigi is the leader, you know, she, she's the decision maker. They defer to her, but she has this wonderful ability to uh, incorporate the other two Didi's daughters uh, with her decision making so that it's like it's, it's in harmony. I mean, perhaps they have animate, animated conversation behind closed doors, I have no idea, but um, Bari Gigi presents a complete picture. Manjali Didi, on the other hand, she's a Sanskrit scholar, she would teach the uh, pracharics, uh, the philosophy, she would check their shlokas, and she was a bit more like Amaji in a way, in that she would sit there quietly and she'd observe. And she just watches and then she might make one or two comments and they are so to the mark, like bullseye, you know. So she wasn't, um, I, I don't think she's verbose in the sense that she, she uses an economy of words, but her silence speaks volumes. 
her eyes, the way she looks and sees, speaks volumes. So she, she's a very solid personality. She's a, a tower of strength, but a, a quiet inward strength that you can't help but feel. But her nature is more quieter. Chota Didi, well, Chota Didi is so playful, you know, and she's so strong and she'll call it quickly. She'll call something and she'll say something. And so, you know, she's almost like the enforcer. Bari Gigi is the leader. Manjali Didi sits quietly observing and saying pertinent words here and there. But Chota Didi takes the lead. She, she will actually initiate change. She will make the phone call. She will call somebody and give them instruction. She's almost in many ways like the, the voice of the three combined. So their personalities are very different from each other and yet, and yet there's this wonderful harmony between the three. My name is Varun Kapoor. Um, originally I'm from Jammu, India. Currently I'm living in San Francisco. Uh, I worked there. So in 2012, I was doing my bachelor's um, from India and I accidentally uh, land on JKP YouTube channel. And that's where I started listening to Maharaji. <laughs> um, one of the lecture that I still remember that pulled me very strongly is, so it's a three part lecture, three uh, lectures uh, series on YouTube called Oh Mind, Listen to the Most Important Advice, part one, two, three. Uh, those were the lectures resolved all the doubts in my mind that some of them I didn't even knew of. And after that, it was no looking back. Um, then I started researching more, looking for more videos, any stuff during 2012, 2013, 2011, anything related to Maharaji on internet, I downloaded everything on my computer. And I started listening to Maharaji again and again and again. And Mekon Merakon is another series that was very, very powerful and just pulled me very strongly. I met Didis for the first time in 2015. Uh, one thing that is really, really special, uh, although I didn't meet Maharaji physically, but obviously with his grace and mercy, I, I, I can't feel that Maharaji, I have never met Maharaji, but um, talking to Didis or just looking at them, uh, it feels, it feels, I feel the love and affection um, I have never felt anywhere. It's different. I mean, I meet so many people, I talk to so many people, but uh, with Didis, it's totally different. I mean, and I would imagine sitting in front of Maharaji and having that, having the same feeling. For Bari Didi, um, whenever she sits casually with us, um, one of the things that I really admire um, is the level of sim with the level of simplicity she talks and she breaks down the message in such a simple manner it just zip through the, your mind um, even like today we were the didi was just casually talking that um, Maharaji is the only one that you should love he's, he's, he's everybody's guru um, so all those small nuggets, even though she's not addressing you directly, but uh, you just get that message so strongly. For Choti Didi, I would like to say like, she, uh, she makes sure that all of us are not digressing from the path. And I think that's really, really important. Uh, somebody has to do that. Yesterday she was talking to one of the devotees and she was asking them that, does one of their uh, younger son has a phone? And uh, she said, yes. And then Didi said, don't give them phone. It's, 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 a, it's a big kusang. Um, so uh, that, that message uh, sends across uh, to everybody and, and everybody started thinking that even the younger kids have phone or not. So that's really important too, because right now kids are all on phone, you know, zipping through any content, no, no filters, nothing. So Choti Didi is making sure that the younger generation of devotees are not going into kusang at such an early age. This is my personal opinion. To me, Manjali Didi seems very technical uh, and 
very logical. Uh, I don't know like the reality, but this is my personal experience. Uh, I feel like when I'm talking to Manjali Didi, my answers should be very, very thought through. I cannot just say anything to her. Uh, and, and, and since Manjali Didi has taught so many pracharaks, so that shows, um, that, that shows uh, where she is and uh, what she is capable of. So, uh, so all the life decisions should be through <laughs> Manjali Didi. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a. It's uh, as I said. I I have not met Naraji physically, but whenever I come here or I talk to Didi's, so much inspiration. Like we you, we do sadhana in the hall, and whenever I lose my roop, then I just look at them, and that give me boost. That give me inspiration to push myself hard, um, and that has always been the case. Uh, sometimes I miss Zoom, um, and that. Obviously, I, I feel bad, but when I go to Zoom, even I just say Radhe Radhe, that fills up my day and give me inspiration to move forward towards Maharaji more and more. And that's what Devi's are always teaching us. I, I once said to Choda Devi, you know, I said, Choda Devi, the youngest daughter, why, why do you always tell me off? You know, it was in a, a nice frame. Why, why do you tell me off all the time? And she just looked at me and she said, do you want me to be your friend or not? <laughs> and, and I always felt that the, the Didis, when they would correct you or they would say something, it wasn't about them or about their ego or their needs. It was about what you need to do to improve and benefit yourself. And they are like a signpost. If you forget Maharaji, they'll quickly remind you, here, go there, go there. If you forget about Sri Maharaji, they'll quickly remind you. I can't imagine the picture without them. I can't imagine Maharaji without them, they are an extension of his nature, of what he wants to enable to get done. Um, they're living prashad, after all, they're the children of Maharaji and Amar. They were around Maharaji almost all of their life, bar those few years when they went outside to study. And so they caught every utterance from Sri Maharaji. They didn't miss anything. So all of that knowledge and personality of Maharaji naturally was assimilated, integrated into their personality. My name is Ria and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I used to go to the youth camps in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I started out when I was like 12 years old and I would just go to the camps every summer and just keep learning more and more. And then um, we opened a center in Atlanta, so I just kept going to satsang and then eventually came to India and met Didi's and then just never looked back. In the beginning, I think Girtan was the main reason I kept coming. I really loved like learning the instruments, playing dholak and singing. Um, and then as I got to learn more about the philosophy, I felt like every question that I had just growing up, like basic stuff, like why we do the most basic things in life. It would just, it was just all getting answered, like, you know, like magically. So I think something that really kept me on this path was, you know, Maranji always um, emphasized that we need to have a good education. Um, so that was nice. Like you don't have to go and be a sannyasi and live in the ashram. You can still have your own life and you're living, but you're also doing your, you know, you're doing your sadhana every day. You're, um, you're doing sadhana while you're doing work. Yeah, I think definitely these are like the definition of lead by example. Um, you know, just guru bhakti, like you just can follow them to the T and you're good to go. You know, everything they do just from like waking up to eating, like everything's on a schedule. Everything's according to how Maharaji did it, his philosophy, his like structure. And, you know, if they're doing it, it's possible. 
we just follow them. While we're here, we follow it. So like, why not go back and, you know, do it there too? I just, yes, I love them. <laughs> I love being with them. I love looking at them. <laughs> just being with them and so much love that they give. Like, you can't not love them, you know? Like, if I wasn't here, like, like, what would I even do, you know? I feel like I would be so lost and I just like, it just found home. So today, it's, it's, it's such clear markers. They are keeping the integrity of what Maharaji's established. They are keeping, they're maintaining people's understanding and, and urging them to go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. They are creating um, a, a plethora of um, charities from schools and hospitals and three-wheelers for the disabled and the widowers, uh, giving to the school children, looking after the sick. They are creating new uh, buildings around the ashram for future generations to come and stay, to live, to participate, to benefit. They are um, absolutely 100% committed to what they're doing and they're doing it, I believe, or oh, I'm convinced as, a, as a, an extension of Maharaji's personality. I don't see the difference. I see them as him manifest here, as doing what he wants them to do. But they don't say, give to me, give to me. Never. They redirect. If you forget, they, Maharaji, Maharaji, Maharaji. And what a gift they are giving us by his grace. We yes. start with her. I'm Dr. Dipali Agarwal. I am ophthalmologist, eye specialist, practicing in Delhi currently. So I am Dr. Amit Agarwal. And I'm a cancer expert. We call ourselves medical oncologist. We treat advanced cancer cases with chemotherapy and advanced things. It was Maharaji's video which we were hearing, both me and my wife Dipali, which uh, kind of um, brought us into a different realm of attraction and devotion. So um, I was following a lot of, I, I would say we were following a lot of different paths over a period of time, a lot of Sanatan Dham, but we never felt, uh, I would say I never felt completely comfortable, but when I heard Maharaji's, it was like he was talking the way I wanted. Uh, each word of his, each lecture of his attracted to my heart and my soul. That's how I wanted. His, his lectures were crystal clear. His lectures opened up my mind. It clarified all my doubts. There was no confusion left out. Things were so clear. I feel Dedis have really carried forward the legacy which Sri Maharajji has taught us. And uh, the institution has uh, grown bigger and uh, I would say, I don't know if I can use the word better, but uh, it has grown. Add something here before you. So you know, uh, one could see from this vast thing how Maharaji would have done it, and it is so often that the institutes have a different way of growing or not growing after the after the master is no longer in the physical form. But you could see how the things are going on. The thing, the way the things are going on, it's exactly like how Maharaji was doing it would have done that, wish that he was here. So I, I can't see, I can't see um, any change of a kind. And I think the, these are just carrying out the philosophy of Maharajis as the Maharajji is doing it. I've met so many people who have been through that time and this time, and they can't feel a change. And they're doing a commendable job. It's such a huge, it's such a huge endeavor both spiritually, physically, even medically, because I'm a doctor, I will think about medically. Um, I think uh, it's, it's divine. You know, 
um, the it's not about you know we talked about the kind of care that we provide it's also about the fact that we look after or the ashram looks after the people who can hardly do anything you know they don't have the money and the places these ashrams are looking after other places where people don't have money to even eat for example i mean they may not have a uh, full three three meals a day and they just can't pay so they're being treated free of cost they're being given food also sometimes they're given clothes also in between for example in barsana in january we actually distributed kambals you know i think i want to carry this uh, distribution of bags is uh, more than a, a symbolic thing i would say it gives them uh, gives the children not only the gift they was all so happy you could see it on their faces mm -hmm. but it also gives them a message uh, uh, if they study they will be um, self reliant they'll be uh, more independent and perhaps economically sound as well in addition to uh, getting good uh, cultural uh, cultural values from from the ashram that's then, what my thought process is then there is the school girl school in mangal which we went and visited it has done the first job. thing was only for girls which was magical you know uh. as you are all aware i'm the only guy in this is that uh, the women in this country are underprivileged they are not sent yes. to the schools the boys may be sent but the girls won't be so to have an all girls school starting from lkg up to the graduation College. up to the post graduation looking after their study needs the food need the clothes need their travel need the cycles the everything you know this is magical then for example this year two of the kids have uh, ranked very high in up state which tell you about the level of education that's being imparted yes we i want to add that i i really um, uh, feel all the time didis uh, did, all didis are working tirelessly mm -hmm. um, to you know sort of uplift us mortals bari ji is an extraordinary artist she paints imageries of Radha, Krishna, the Gopis, and even uh, she's coloured in old black and white photos of Sri Maharaji with such skill that they look like they were taken in a coloured photo. But they weren't. So when you look at the imagery of Radha, for example, um, it transports you from the typical um, way that the Indian community portray Radha and Krishna, which is very formal. Bari Gigi broke that mold. She painted Radha leaning on a bower of a tree with the moon in the background. She's, you know, the way she's dressed and the, and the way that she painted the figure of Radha, it was um, it was devotional. It was divine in the sense, and so she evokes in you um, uh, a sense of joy and wonder and, and immense interest in the divine, actual divine forms of Radha Krishna and the Gopis. So her choice of colors, the colors that she uses, they evoke an emotion in you. The style that she uses, the environment that she chooses. Um, you could imagine a Gopi's heart, uh, you know, or Radha's heart for Krishna, or Krishna's heart for Radha. Um, she brings all that to bear. The interesting thing is, Barijiji's sense of color and proportion and, and style um, is evident today, you know, how this ashram presents itself to those who come, the colors that she chooses, the placements. Uh, she's making this work of art of the actual ashram itself. Manjali Didi um, is a Sanskrit scholar, a PhD. And, you know, of Sri Maharaji, um, the Kashi Vibhat Parishat, for example, and all the other scholars, uh, scriptural scholars around India, they would say Maharaji's Sanskrit is, is just perfect. The pronunciation, the cadence, um, it's extraordinary, in fact. They are in awe of uh, Maharaji, what he, how he spoke. Manjali Didi is of that uh, mold. Maharaji appointed her to train the student pracharaks, preparing them for their life of teaching in the world. 
Now, Cho Didi's skills are broad, like all of them. They, they, they really have broad uh, abilities, obviously, but decorate the deities of Radha Krishna. And in the early days, she actually designed the, the, um, the costume or the clothing that would go on to the Mortis, which eventually would you know, become in, like Bhakti Mandir here in Mangar or Sri Kripalu Dham. She has an extraordinary ability of design and bringing the clothes into a beautiful, cohesive presentation of the beauty of Radha Krishna. Uh, my name is Gaurav Varshwani. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia in the United States. Uh, I'm working in technology consulting. So I, I feel like growing up, especially in formative years of our lives, uh, guidance is very important because there's in the world there's so many uh, speakers and theories and paths that you know people choose to follow. And it's super important in the early years to find a path which is the best for us. And uh, you know, coming into contact with Shri Maharaji, and uh, doing you know, joining the satsang of Shri Maharaji, and understanding that's the right path, is the first step. But being uh, away from the ashram, being in a, a completely different world, it's hard to live by those principles, especially in a, like a high school or a college. And that daily Zoom, that daily interaction with these really kept me grounded, especially when I was in those years. Well, I remember before I went to college, right after I graduated from high school, I came to uh, Missouri, where we are today. And when I was leaving, uh, the last thing Chodidi said to me was, uh, don't keep too many friends. The less friends you have, the better. And that always stayed in the back of my head that, is this somebody who I really want to associate myself with? You know, the more people you know, and the more people you are uh, closer with, uh, as Shimaji says, people don't befriend you just out of the goodness of their heart. They, we're all selfish in a way, and we all want something from one another. Maybe it's a, in a business a relationship, or as a friend, uh, I have your back and you have my back. You, you know, I do something for you, and you eventually you have to do something for me. And that's something that you know can take up a lot of time. Maybe I want to practice my sadhana uh, on a certain day and somebody um, who I'm friends with calls me up and wants to talk about things going on in their life and before you know it, two hours, three hours are gone and then you're thinking, you know, well, I, this is my time that I was supposed to you know, practice my spirituality and it got taken up you know, by something that I could have avoided. From morning to, to night, from, you know, early hours in the morning to night, every action Didi has is to give, whether it's her time, whether it's uh, you know, giving uh, fundraising, for uh, people who are not, you know, well off, who are poor children, who, who don't have, you know, basic amenities, or, or to our, you know, charitable hospitals for the people who can't afford need. Every action that Didi takes is uh, for the benefit of others and never thinking about themselves. Every action with so much focus and so much generosity. And I can say without, if I hadn't came in contact and gotten to know Didi's or Maraji, I, w I would never think about giving in any way. Around the year 2001-2002, I'm not sure exactly, Sri Maharaji gave a responsibility to three daughters, a responsibility that they grew into. And that was, he made them the three presidents of the JKP Trust. He um, gave to Bari Gigi, the eldest daughter, to be the president of Jagat Guru Kripalu Parishat, Sri Kripalu Dham. It was known as Bhakti Dham back in those days. And um, Manjali Didi, the middle daughter, she was given or you know, the role of, the professional role actually, of being the president of the um, Vrindavan Trust, Prem Mandir, uh, in Vrindavan. And Chota Didi, the youngest daughter, was of Rangili Mahal, the uh, ashram in Basana. So this was, you know, 20 years, 21 years ago. And um, Maharaji, of course, was still um, vibrant on this earth, but he began the, the, the teaching and the development of them 
uh, in this role and guided them so they began to understand the, the broader concept of what Sewa he was asking of them to do. So come 2013, um, Sri Maharaji left his physical body and from 2013 till today and onwards, um, they had to really step up into their position. Prior to that, Sri Maharaji was leading from the front, taking all of the responsibility. In fact, he once said, if you experience just for six seconds the pressures and decisions I, would have, to, I have to make all day, every day, your heads would explode, you know. Um, and, and I took from that, my gosh, you know, he, he sleeps only three hours a night. He gets up at 12.30 uh, in the morning. Um, he, he's like a metronome. He has his day metered out. Um, he's got meetings and he's got all kinds of things that he has to do. But from 2013, when he left his physical body, all of that immense responsibility was now in the hands of the three deities. Now they had had the previous years to grow into and to understand, but now they actually had to not swallow their grief, but they had to um, move through their personal needs to the needs of everyone um, selflessly. My name is Devyang. I'm a physician. I reside in Houston, Texas. So it's uh, it's not humanly possible, right? <laughs> um, you know, I've observed many CEOs, leaders of big organizations, companies. Nobody works this hard. Nobody has this kind of schedule. Um, you know, there's just no way that I could even follow half of their daily schedule. You know, they wake up by 12.30, 1 o'clock, and from that time onwards, they're constantly with people, for people, and they're constantly working tirelessly for us. Um, their day starts with Zoom at uh, close to 3 a.m. Indian time, which for us living in the West is very, very convenient because it falls right towards the end of the working day. They're always there to give us spiritual guidance. Their personalities are so vast that it's difficult to talk about a particular aspect. Um, but number one, just by observing their lifestyle, if you can follow their lifestyle, then automatically you will solve the vast majority of any problem that you might have living out in your house in any corner of the world. Um, you know, just by observing their physical life, you know, they're very religious about um, physical activity, even at this age. Uh, these are always stressing, you know, physical activity. They themselves walk uh, several times a day. Um, and also mental activity, they stress, you know, spiritual sadhana. Um, you know, they're leaders of such a massive trust. I mean, you know, I have a small company with five employees and it is such a challenge dealing with just five people. <laughs> and they're dealing probably with over 5,000. And the way they deal with it is just amazing. And if you just spend time to see how they deal with other people, interact with other people, that, and if you can implement some of that in our, in our life, you know, that will, you know, I've tried to implement some of that on how I deal with just my few employees and it makes such a world of difference. Um, you know, each person is a different challenge. Um, and you have to interact with each person differently. And that is what most of us don't know. Uh, me in particular, uh, you know, I tend to interact with every single person uh, with the same personality. And especially in the workplace, when you have to get productivity out of five different people with five different personalities, I have learned that I can't do that. I can't treat all five the same. Um, 
And uh, you know, if you observe Didi's, you, 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 you will learn that. Uh, that, you know, in, in real life, you know, somebody may have an irritable personality. Well, you can't get rid of that employee <laughs> because they may be fulfilling a very important part in your organization and they may have certain special skills that are hard to replace. Uh, so, you know, how you deal with somebody like that uh, at the same time, you know, getting their productivity and, uh, you know, I'm a physician, you know, so getting their best clinical care as output towards patients is really important. Uh, so all of us came because of Maharaji, for Maharaji, he's our guru. And, um, you know, we can't physically visualize him. Uh, but did these help us by continuously reminding us of his teachings, uh, his instructions. Um, you know, they, they these host several sadhana programs throughout the year where we get to come to Guru Dham and practice spiritual sadhana according to the instructions of Sri Maharaji. Um, every day uh, in the ashram, morning and evening, um, select speeches of Maharaji are always played, which are very instructional. Um, so they really are continuing his vision. You know, all of the ashrams continue to grow. And they have kept the schedule to this day as Sri Maharaji, they, they sleep just a few hours, they get up very early in the morning, um, they have a schedule, they work minute by minute, the full day for the benefit of others. And so these three ashrams, or these three different trusts that they were each made a president of, they've all flourished, all of them. There's no stagnation, there's no regression, it's all progression. They have the, the family, the satsang family of those who have accepted Maharaji and are accepting Maharaji and will accept Maharaji, they are taking all of these different um, elements and making it possible to progress. And so they, the, you know, the ashrams in each area have grown. Um, the, the integrity, the focus, the direction, I don't believe there could be anybody on planet earth, anybody, who could step up uh, to what they are doing and achieve what they're doing and seemingly effortlessly. By that I mean they don't wear on their sleeve the stresses and strains of what they have to do. When they are in the room with others, they are for the people. When they go to the hospital and they are in, inaugurating a new wing, like a new operating theatre or dentistry uh, or um, placing a Murti of Radha Krishna or Maharaji there, um, the way they honour the doctors, the way they honour the nurses, the way they honour the, all the admin people to make this work, they are present. They don't wear on their sleeve, oh, I just had a busy day, you know, I really haven't got time to be here. They are present in whatever they are doing and they give a hundred percent commitment. You know, you could think, oh, this fellow is speaking in hyperbole, meaning I'm speaking in an exaggerated language. But I am not. I'm actually underselling this. They are better than what words I can put to the page or orally speak about who and what they do. It is mind-boggling, awe-inspiring what they are doing. My name is Gaurav Vig. I am from uh, New York, USA. I am a uh, tax accountant. Yeah, it's actually funny. I actually uh, got introduced through my wife. At the time, she wasn't, obviously. Uh, this was around uh, 2015, and she introduced me to Sri Maharaji and the JKP organization. Um, you know, I was, I was always spiritually inclined. I just didn't really have the right guidance, per se. Um, well, I had some like questions internally at the time because 
you know, I was, I wasn't skeptic, but I was like on the fence, I guess. Um, and I just had some internal questions. And then uh, there was a couple, in the beginning, there was a couple of speeches that I heard from Sri Maharaji and everything just clip, clicked one after another. Uh, it was like magic. <laughs> Our purpose is to, you know, find uh, unlimited happiness, find, uh, find perfection, right? It's, it's indescribable, you know, only once you start, you know, indulging into this uh, realm or however you want to say it, then you start slowly experiencing what it's all about. You know, it, it, it's subtle at times, but sometimes it's not subtle. And it's just, you just feel ecstatic, right? Didi's uh, tell kids, young kids, you know, that are in college or in high school to study hard, right? Because if you can't even do study hard, you can't even do the bare, you know, bare minimum in the world, then how are you going to, you know, achieve what you want in the spiritual world, right? Because if you, if you're disciplined enough, if you have the motivation, you have, you know, you have the uh, determination to do so, then that could obviously carry on to the spiritual. And that's, that's the message I see when, you know, DDs and when Maharaj, you always want, you know, to, to do your best in the material world. Unfortunately, I didn't have the privilege to meet Maharaj, but, you know, I met uh, DDs, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. And it's just, it's phenomenal. Like anytime you're in their presence, you just feel uplifted, no matter how sad you are, no matter what you're thinking, no matter how difficult you think life is, any association with them, either when you're in person or even on Zoom or even on a call, they just uplift you. It's just, it's magic. I don't have enough words to praise them, how I feel. It's, I, you know, whatever, whatever they say, whatever they do, just listen and, and you know, I'm privileged to do whatever, uh, you know, service they want or any help they need, at, you know, at the drop of a hat. Um, very inspirational and, you know, they're, they're pretty much my everything, you know. There were a lot of projects that Sri Maharaji initiated during his time here. And when the time came for the deities to uh, assume that mantle, um, th th it was already an organic living thing. Um, already, you know, the offshoots and the growth. But just like a garden, if you look at a garden and you don't actually maintain the garden, well, it's a big mess. It requires a skilled gardener to enable a garden to um, manifest its beauty and, and its qualities and its benefits. So the deities, if you like, they have uh, worked with the initiatives that Sri Maharaji started and it continues to grow. And so the deities, they have managed and they are managing to enable these projects to come into fruition. And while they are doing that, they are drawing the sadhaks, the satsangis, the devotees from all over the world to be engaged in these extremely important, worthwhile, beneficial programs and buildings. And they have done it with such extraordinary, exquisite skill. Exquisite skill. Maharaji came on this earth to make sure it got underway. The deities are now actually implementing things that Maharaji started and introducing things seemingly of their own initiative. But it's a conspiracy, a divine conspiracy. The difference initially was not being able to see him physically, uh, not being able to see him. And when you come to the ashram, there was an uncertainty in my mind how things would work. But just seeing how deities have worked day and night, that inspired, even without them saying, just by observing how they are carrying out Maharaji's every single agya, motivates us. Most important when I get tired, especially if I'm sick, I tend to seize back on my sevas, thinking that I'm tired, I need to protect my body. But deities through their example and with personal talks have motivated people like myself who are, you know, not as young the way they used to be when they entered the system, that there's nothing to hold back 
We are on the path where we are reaching out the ultimate and the topmost. Actually, I started in a boarding school. So I guess maybe the first year, the second year I was in boarding school, I was facing a lot of bullying and uh, a lot of mean people in general. And then when I was about, about to leave Masuri, I started crying in front of Bari Didi that I don't know how to go there, how to go and then Bari Didi said that there are people who are like this, and are like this, and they don't care about it. They just want to act and how to do it, how to do it, and how to do it, and then everything set will be set. So like in hostels when someone was being mean or someone was like name teasing, name calling, it's basically like Maharaj used to say कि ये तो बस कहने कहने की बात है किसी के कहने से हो तो ही ना जाओगे so that's the same philosophy applied there how long will they can continue that scenario one month two months they can't last an entire lifetime so putting that in mind only I just power through I find that the continuous love and just care that Didi's provide everyone, doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how long you've been in satsang, they just are always there to not only give you the advice you need in your spiritual life, but you know, how to navigate things in your everyday life with spirituality in mind. One of the things Didi said told me is that everybody has their own life and you are not to concern yourself with what other people do. You know, this life is just yours. You know, God has given you this human body and you just have to let other people do what they want to do and not take it upon yourself to either fix them, work with them, or do anything with them, really. Because we're, we're all given difficult people in our lives. It's just, you know, there's a common saying, it's sort of like you don't get to pick the hand that you're dealt. All three of them are different aspects of Maraji. And, you know, if you, if you, as I've been paying attention to them, as I've been looking at them, interacting with them, I feel like I'm speaking to a different side of Maraji. And it, it makes me feel like Maraji will always be there. Nothing has changed. The same grace and kripa we were getting from Maraji, we're getting more so now from the deities. So Didi's work tirelessly for all of us um, and for Maraji and they are a great role model for how we as devotees of Radha Krishna should live our lives because their dedication is, is amazing. I think Didi's oftentimes tell us things that Maharaji said, they, they always just spread what Maharaji gave us and one thing they, they say to always be doing is uh, when you're breathing always say Radhe Nam. So that's that's a really big thing because you can do that all, all the time and Didi's have said that once to me when, when I was in Masuri a couple of years ago and I, that, that, I try to keep that with me now as much as I can because it's so important. Do, if I use direct words, I see Didi's just different form of Maharaji in three different forms he's continuing his mission. I hope that uh, throughout my lifetime Didi's guidance that keeps me in the path I'm in. Maharaji has pulled me in. He has apparently selected from somewhere and actually cut my bad scars here and there and actually given this status. Because a tiny soul, the neutral energy form, I'm zero. I realize I'm zero. And a zero, when it is picked from somewhere, a pick of dust picked from somewhere, put on a magnifying glass and give all the light of knowledge to whatever it can absorb or take in, then make someone who can realize and recognize them and be thankful. So that's everything is instilled by them. So there is no words I can, I can use. Thank you is very, very little for that. So hope I can actually devote my lifetimes, life to many innumerable lives in their service. So I just hope they can continually, continuously guide, guide me through that.
The world lives in confusion. According to the Vedic philosophy, this is the age of Kali Yuga, the age of darkness, in the sense that people have no understanding of who they are spiritually. They think they're the body, the name that's been given, the parents that gave them birth. Uh, they believe that they are of this nationality and this gender. And so there's a lot of tension in the world today, a lot of uh, misunderstanding, a lot of political interference with people's lives. Families are fighting each other, divorces. You know, it's kind of a bleak picture. There's very good stuff going on, of course. But in general, this is an iron age of ignorance of the self. Now, when you come into the company of someone who's got clarity, who really understands the mechanics of all of this, and really deeply, profoundly understands your true potential, your divine potential, and to liberate your mind from all of the stress and worries and anxiety, and, and give a, an understanding of why you are so important, and why this human life is so important and what it can achieve. So if you come into the company of such a one who knows and understands these things by being in their space, by listening to what they have to say, by seeing the examples that they personally set by the way they live, this inspires you to be a better version of yourself. It inspires you to fan the embers of your spiritual power that you have actually inside the heart region where the Atma, the Jiva Atma, the soul lives. So the Didi's role, you know, you, you, you say this, but unless you experience it, how can you actually say, oh, that's right, until you experience it. But when you're in their company, I can't think of any other person on planet Earth that would inspire you and exhibit the qualities and strength and focus that these three daughters of Sri Maharaji, the Didis, are manifesting and gifting to the world.
महाराज जी के आज का पालन करो उनसे प्यार बढ़ाओ उनकी ही सेवा करो जय बोलो उनकी ही सब कुछ करो हम तो जो 